Excellency Emerson Mnangagwa, President of the Republic of Zimbabwe. Excellency Mohamed Bazoum, President of the Republic of Niger. Excellency Philip Mpango, Vice President of the United Republic of Tanzania. Excellencies, friends, and colleagues, Herr Mariam Disselen, former Prime Minister of Ethiopia, and Agra Board Chair, Orushego Nobasanjo, former President of Nigeria, Leonel Zinsu, former Prime Minister of Benin, Patricia Scotland, Commonwealth Secretary General, President of IFAD, Ms. Alvaro Rario, Dr. Agnes Karibata, President of Agra, senior officials, members of the diplomatic corps, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I welcome you all to Kigali for the African Green Revolution Forum 2022. Allow me to start by appreciating the leadership of my friend Haile Mariam de Salen for his critical role as Africa's ambassador for agricultural transformation. I also would like to thank Dr. Nyens Karibata and the entire AGRA team for partnering with Rwanda to organize this summit. When we met one year ago, it was on the eve of the United Nations Food Systems Summit. Our continent put forward a strong common African position, which we have to build on and deliver results on the ground. Let's remember what this work is real about. It is about nutrition, nutritious food on families' tables every day. It's about more income in farmers' bank accounts. It's about growing agribusiness and creating new service jobs of the farm. Above all, it's about ensuring that Africa is more resilient in the face of unexpected shocks. But we are off track in achieving our agreed targets under the Comprehensive African Agricultural Development Program and the Malabo Declaration, as well as the Sustainable Development Goals. The COVID pandemic, ongoing conflicts, and the global supply chain and energy crisis are all pressing unusual strain on our food systems. A few lessons are clear from our past experiences. First, we are stronger together. The African continental free trade area is a good start with huge potential. We cannot have 
a coherent approach to agricultural transformation without a close integration with Africa's international trade policy. We also need to make more investments in the transport and storage infrastructure and more and move faster to harmonize our tariff systems. Second, those hardest hit from recent shocks are local businesses and smallholder farmers. Targeted support can make all the difference in keeping the businesses open. Finally, investments made today create resilience and new possibilities tomorrow. For example, following the last food price crisis in 2008, Rwanda invested significantly in post-harvest management, among other measures to improve food security, and this paid off for us during the pandemic. Beyond our continent, we have so much to gain from and share with other regions. Many are represented here today from the Americas, Asia, Europe, and the Middle East. Africa should not be struggling with food insecurity given our natural endowments. We can feed ourselves and even feed others. This is an opportunity for us to work together, learn from each other, and advance homegrown solutions tailored to our specific contexts. For example, at the World Economic Forum annual meeting last May, Rwanda committed to co-lead and host the Food Action Alliance, a multi-stakeholder platform for public-private partnerships in food systems. Ahead of COP27 in Egypt later this year, we must also advocate for stronger commitments to reduce emissions and drive action on adaptation and resilience, particularly in developing countries. Allow me, Your Excellencies, distinguished uh, delegates, to conclude with a tribute to the outgoing chair of the Africa Food Prize Committee, President Orusha Gunobasanjo. President Obasanjo, my brother, friend, over the last Six years, you have succeeded at raising the global profile and impact of the prize. Your lifelong dedication to our continent's development is an inspiration to all of us.
and we thank you and honor you today. As we track our progress and hold each other accountable, let us learn from our successes and setbacks to strengthen our efforts going forward. By transforming our food systems together, we will achieve in a sustainable way our ambitions for our people, planet, and our shared prosperity as laid out in the 2030 agenda. Once again, I thank you all for being part of the solution, and I wish us all a fruitful summit. Thank you very much.